Right. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you guys hear us? Hello. Hello. Can you all hear us? Anybody online now? <laughs> Okay, maybe let's wait for a while for people to come online. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Is the audio okay for everybody? If it's I okay, think, give us a thumbs up. I think that's shy. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we are live now on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, okay, somebody gave us a thumbs up. So oh. I think we are good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, today from Heart Foundation, we have uh, our nutritionist, Kiet here. Hello. Yeah, so a few days back, uh, it was the Dietitian uh, and Nutritionist Day. So in conjunction with that, we are actually having this Facebook Live for Kiet to share more about his work here. Uh, at Singapore Heart Foundation, as well as to give you guys some nutrition tips. Mm. Yeah. So maybe first of all, Kit, uh, you'd like to tell us about your work here at uh, Singapore Heart Foundation? Mm, I think overall, it's to care for your heart. <laughs> okay, I think um, for, for, for myself and a lot of our colleagues, we actually focus a lot of um, doing programs and activities to promote heart health. Mm. So one of my key work is actually to develop uh, nutrition educational tools and apart from that conducting nutrition talks um, demos and even workshop as well mm. to equip the public with the skills to take care of your heart okay mm. so uh, a few days back we also saw you posting <laughs> on your day at SHF yeah. and uh, you're also a trainer for CPR yes okay maybe share with us uh, some of your experience and uh, the classes here. Oh, okay. So maybe I, I just want to, to take this opportunity to, to share with everyone because when it comes to CPR and AAD, a lot of us are a little bit worried because sometimes mm -hmm. it seems to be so scary, so intimidating, or even so technical. But I'll just say we it is really very simple. I can summarize it in three steps. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But before this three step, I think the key thing that I want people to remember when they encounter a cardiac arrest, mm -hmm. the first thing they should do is to my kia. Okay. My kanjong my my okay. also because if that happens, you will not remember what are the mm. key things to do and you will not be able to focus well as well. Yeah. Um, so the very first key step is to call ambulance 995. Okay. Okay, calling ambulance 995 is important because it helps you to, to inform SCDF mm. so that they can dispatch the ambulance. And at the same time, the dispatcher will actually guide you what to do throughout the entire process which help you to provide some confidence and mm. some guidance along the way. Yeah. Um, next, when it comes to performing chest compression, okay, once you have confirmed the casualty is not responding it's not, and not breathing, you can perform chest compression in the center of the chest, mm -hmm. compress hard okay, and compress fast, push hard and push fast. Okay, that's another way. And of course, when you have an AED, okay, very simple, just switch it on and follow the instruction. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. Yeah. But of course, if you would like to learn more, on what to do, we have certification course and even a simplified course for that as well. Mm -hmm. So please visit our website to find out more. So. Yay. Okay, so maybe uh, let's get into the Q&A proper. Okay. So a few days back, we also uh, did a call for questions. Uh, we kind of like consolidated a few uh, questions. So first of all, I think uh, what we saw is that uh, Kenneth, uh, somebody from, somebody called Kenneth, <laughs> Actually, ask this question about COVID nineteen. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. So. So when it comes to COVID nineteen. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. COVID nineteen. So because uh, currently this is the um hot topic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it about nutrition or, or what was it regarding? Okay. Yeah. So uh, we would like to also know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kenneth would like to know. Uh, with regards to COVID-19, mm. how can people actually protect themselves? Okay, I'll, I will say, don't worry, okay, keep calm, okay? Because I'm a nutritionist and I can actually share with some tips and guide on how to boost your immunity, okay, which mm. can help to combat um, different um, viruses and even prevent your risk towards different chronic diseases as well. Yeah. Um, I always believe that food gives us power. 
because food um, can make you healthy and even happy as well. Mm. And when it comes to nutrition, the most important thing to take note of is to have a healthy and balanced meal. Um, do you know what's a healthy and balanced meal? Uh, I think it's basically mm, in a bowl, we should have like some proteins, some carbo, uh, some portion of um, vegetables and fruits. Oh yeah, that's very good. That's very good. I think mm. uh, most important when it comes <clears throat> to meal, be it um, breakfast, lunch or dinner, it, it's got to be balanced. Okay, like what King Lee mentioned earlier about the fruits and vegetables, whole grain and protein. Okay, but one of the key things is the portion. Okay, some mm. of us, mm. how much protein I should consume and stuff. So one easy way okay, that um, the Heart Foundation ha has done is actually to provide an illustration over here. Mm. A plate, okay, it's a real plate. Okay, to, to actually share with you what is a uh, recommended or ideal uh, portion sizing for mm. different food groups. Like for example, when it comes to fruit and vegetables, okay, sorry, <laughs> it's good to have at least half a plate, half a plate, mm -hmm. okay? And when it comes to protein, probably around a quarter of it. Um, if it's possible, always choose some other options such as your plant protein, um, your fatty fishes, um, chicken breast. Okay, these are some healthier options of protein as well. Mm -hmm. And the other one will be your carbohydrate. And for carbohydrate, you can consider whole grain because it's packed with a lot of nutrients and benefits that is really, really good for health mm -hmm. and immunity mm -hmm. as well. Okay. And I think when it comes to um, healthy eating, okay, that is one important thing that can help us to boost our immunity. Mm -hmm. uh, most important okay, is that during this period, not just during this period of time, we should always be active. We should have an active lifestyle, go for exercises. Mm -hmm. um, if you like jogging, go for jogging. If you don't like jogging, explore other exercises that will actually interest you as well. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, there are a lot of different types of new exercises yeah. which will interest you. Mm -hmm. That will be really beneficial to help you to boost up your immunity. Mm. Okay? And, and most important of all? To wash your hands. <laughs> wash your hands is very important. I mean, in terms of maintaining your basic hygiene, yeah. it's one key step mm. to combat against COVID-19 as well. Yeah, okay. Mm. And um, I think we don't give away this plate, right? Mm, not at the moment. Not at the okay. moment, okay? <laughs> so how do the public actually then uh, gauge what is one portion, what is two portions? Oh. I always have this problem or this uh this concern uh, okay yeah, so simple way okay, yeah i would say like this do this okay this okay. one okay guys do you find if you find this familiar okay this is like our it man uh oh. winsun master right recently yeah, I did some moment. yeah well yeah, yeah, every time before i fight you're like sing okay right <laughs> so this is my way to memorize or even um guide me in mm. terms of portion sizing okay okay there's a fist and there's a palm over here mm. Okay, for fist wise, I think it gives a very good representative of what a uh, portion of your whole grain, your fruit, and your cooked vegetables is like. Mm. So, for example, for illustration, mm. if you imagine yourself having a bowl of rice, okay. okay, if it's flat, okay, it's probably around one portion, mm. uh, one portion of it. It is a heap full. There's probably somewhere around two portions of it as well. And so, okay. same goes for your fruit and vegetables itself. And apple, oh, it's around one piece, this is one mm. serving as well. If it's slightly bigger, like dragon fruit, uh, probably around half of a dragon fruit would be one serving of it. Okay. Okay. Um, the other one, okay, my favorite will be your protein, which is like your meat itself. Mm. This is a good guide to share with you one serving of protein is roughly like, okay, so mm. not the entire hand, okay, but it's more towards our palm, okay? The area over here and the thickness, okay, mm. this is one serving. Okay, so if let's say you have a bigger hand, you're lucky lah, because you have more meat. Okay, particularly it would be very good if you're a meat lover like me mm -hmm. as well. So this is one way that you can actually um, guide yourself in terms of portion sizing. Mm -hmm. But don't do it to other people, otherwise they might think that you're trying to pick a fight. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you have any other mm -hmm. questions, you can feel free to uh, drop us in the comments below. Yep. If not, uh, we will carry on with some of the mm -hmm. other questions which we have gathered. Okay, second question uh, by Kelly. Uh, she asked, how to lose 10 kg, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 10 kg? Possible, but it takes time. Okay, it okay. takes time. I think uh, most important when it comes to weight management, a lot of people have this misconception. If I want to lose weight, I must eat lesser. Mm. Partly true, okay, but it depends on what is less. Okay, essentially, um, a balanced meal is still required. Okay, because it gives you the necessary nutrients mm. to fuel you with the energy and also help to 
um, provide you the, the needs to support your body function. Mm. Okay, that is one key thing. Okay, remember the balanced meal and the concept which I shared earlier. Mm. Um, but of course, when it comes to eating lesser, yes, there is a need to eat lesser, but lesser of the comfort food. Okay, okay. comfort food. Mm. So particularly when it comes to um, mm. those sugary items or even fried food, if you are consuming something like this often, mm -hmm. one key way to, to help you to lose weight is to start reducing the frequency of such food. Okay. And eventually, you will see some progress in your in your weight progressively. Mm. Okay, and, and of course, apart from nutrition, you have to be active also. Active mm. so that it helps you to, to burn some calories and it makes you happy also. Mm. And I think when it comes to exercise, very important because this is my own personal experience. Uh, not somebody that really really enjoy or, or love exercise mm -hmm. earlier uh, i'm quite boring i enjoy jogging okay, okay but for jogging it took mm -hmm. me quite some time so i think earlier when i it was very challenging for me just to jog i feel that oh, i'm suffering mm -hmm. okay but as i tried to progress i started jogging for five minutes actually like, five minutes is all right it's comfortable and i actually enjoyed that shock short um jogging session mm -hmm. but after i have to progress it progress it progressively to 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes and to a level and pace that you're really comfortable with mm. so that is something that what you can do to integrate some um, exercises to your daily activity but of course to complement it it's always good to be more active more active in terms of let's say even by um commutation uh, while, while you're traveling around for mm. example, in the MRT itself, once you alight, you just prefer the stairs. Not only it's less crowded, but it helped me to burn some calories along. And it's faster. It's well. faster. <laughs> <than three hours. laughs> so it's really very good when you are in a run. Yeah. And I think maybe for, for today, I also want to take this opportunity to share one exercise. Okay. okay which uh, can help you to cut at least 200 calories. How much is 200 calories? Oh, that is, Example, what kind of food? Oh, mm. okay, you'll be amazed. Even like your siu mai. Just oh, two like siu mai. Around two or three like that. The small okay. one, uh, you find better, it's around uh, 200 calories. Calories is really quite a fair bit. Mm. Uh, if you're jogging, it'll probably take you around at least 200. It's like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 20 minutes to actually burn off at least 200 calories. Okay. And if you are trying to lose weight, probably mm. you have to double it up. You probably have to run 40 minutes to lose more weight. Okay. So, so that is uh, the concept in terms of calorie intake and calorie output as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so for this exercise, it's really simple. Okay. So mm. all of you just take a look. Okay. Take a look at the screen over. This is very simple. Okay. I like to call it as a chair exercise. Okay. okay. There are a few key muscles that would be required for this. Um, exercise. Mm. Okay, one is your neck, okay. okay, and your back. Very okay. important. Okay. Okay. So loosen all eyes on me. Look at me. Loosen up first. Okay. okay. <laughs> first, very important. Okay, hands on your lap. Hands on your lap. Okay. Straighten your back. Okay? okay. Straighten your back. Okay. To to do some warm up, you need to turn your hip to the left first. Mm. Okay. Okay. So far so good. Hold it there. To okay. the left, then turn to the right. Okay. Mm. Hold it there a little bit. Okay. Feel the stretch. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yep. And then you have to do it a little bit faster. To the left, to the right, and to the left. Every time when someone offer you to eat a snack, <laughs> because it's just saying no. Okay, saying no. So imagine, you, hey, you might or not, and you start to do your exercise, saying no, and you mm. cut yourself by at least two hundred calories. That is almost fourteen minutes of jogging. Okay. Impressive, right? can consider doing this. Kelly, yeah. remember this. Okay, this is a I very good thing. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What is comfort food? Comfort food, okay, to put it another way, is food. Mm. Okay, food that makes you happy and you enjoy it. Okay, mm. Just to share with you some tips, uh, okay. some example, my personal example. Uh -huh. Okay, my comfort food and happy food is like my fried chicken. <gasps> I enjoy fried chicken, I'm honest. Okay. I enjoy fried chicken. <laughs> Mm. Okay, um, so, so it comes to even for dieting, I think, or uh, even healthy eating, I, was, I find it is quite not practical to say that, oh, I totally should not eat all this kind of unhealthy food mm. because sometimes we need some motivation along the way as mm. well. So, I would say, usually, when it comes to comfort food, be more mindful about it. Mm. So, an example is that if, let's say, you're like a chicken wing lover, mm. like a chicken wing lover, huh? 
that you usually enjoy a chicken wing after work every day, mm. right? So in a week, you have seven chicken wings on usual basis, right? Okay. If you want to start to embark on your weight loss plan, mm. okay, first thing you do, okay, maybe for next week, rather than having seven chicken wings, maybe have six chicken wings first. Mm. Okay, do it progressively, okay. reduce it, and you realize that hey, actually I can live without chicken wing as well. Mm. Maybe just once in a while as a guilty pleasure or something that you want to have a source of motivation. Huh? And that is something, one key tips like, to actually uh, remove it from your diet as well. Mm. Okay. Mm. You know what's the key word that I caught from this particular sharing just now? This last sharing you oh. just said. What's the word? Kid says you can start making. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and uh, we have a question. Can I eat anything I like, which is unhealthy food, as long as I exercise regularly? Oh, this is, I think, a lot a lot of misconception about this as well. Mm. I always meet a lot of participants that tell me, hey, kid, kid, I can eat anything. You don't tell mm. me what is healthy food or unhealthy food. I can eat anything because I go exercise every day. Mm, not essentially true. Okay, because sometimes if you are just calories for example mm. if you are constantly consuming food that are higher calories no matter how long or since every day it's almost very challenging mm. to burn it off entirely i think that is one okay. um the other thing that we also need to understand that those less healthy food usually contain content that is less desirable for us for example like trans fat okay? typically like fried food like um, the deep fried chicken wings and stuff contains quite a fair bit of trans fat as well. Mm -hmm. And those are known and proven to be very harmful for our health. Mm -hmm. Okay, And even for salt and sugar itself, consuming regularly will not be beneficial for us, regardless of how, how active you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think we also have <clears throat> Oh, in fact, two. Oh, we found some eight lovers. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, can I eat eggs every day, Justin mm. asks? Okay, I think for when it comes to eggs itself, mm. it's a very complex situation. I love eggs. How many can I eat? Oh, I love <laughs> eggs also, okay? The complex thing is that we have to think of a few things. Mm. Okay, one is that the egg, how do you prepare it? Mm. Okay, is it soft boy or is it a pan fry or is it deep fry? Right, because this one deep affects fry. deep fry. There are deep fry eggs also, okay. deep fry hard boy eggs itself. Oh, okay. Okay, so the cooking method actually affects the nutrient content. Mm. Right. For example, if you boil it, it's okay. Okay, but if you pan fry it or even deep fry it, there's a lot of fat being added into it. Mm. So that is not so ideal. Okay. Um. Second key thing to take note is that I think fortunately, okay, recently um there are evidence that indicate that um the dietary cholesterol, mm. meaning that the cholesterol that we get from our food mm. doesn't influence too much of our blood cholesterol. Okay. Okay. So which means that um we can consume slightly. A little bit more eggs mm. in our diet because earlier there's this concept that ah, eggs are very high in cholesterol yeah. so i shouldn't be consuming too much of it mm. so this means that actually it's okay to incorporate um eggs into your regular diet okay mm. but if you ask me mm, can i eat it every day um i would say i would not encourage um, because it's always good to have a variety of diet mm. um in your in your in your daily life because mm. it provides you different nutrients itself okay. so for example a lot of people like to enjoy their eggs i mean for mm. breakfast mm. right eggs with your bread and your coffee okay um so you can have it for monday maybe for next day you can actually um complement your bread with some tuna with some vegetables even peanut butter as well mm. rotate it around so they can enjoy different variety and nutrients also mm. okay mm. So, uh, Jaslyn, don't eat every day. Lah. Have some variety. <laughs> once in a while, once in a while, it's alright. Yeah. Okay, next one. Mm, earlier, we also got a question from uh, Xenia. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Oh. Is it true? Uh, what do you think? As in, I always tell my daughter this. Okay, I would yeah. say partly true. Okay, okay. partly true. Okay. Uh, but, okay, before I share a few more information, mm. let me share with you a little bit more about mm. fruits and vegetables. Mm. Uh, if you notice, fruits and vegetables have different colours, mm. right? And to summarise it, different colours actually have different benefits. So usually when it comes to apple or even maybe tomato, mm. okay, they're red colour, right? Red colour fruits and vegetables typically contains higher amount of lycopene. Mm. And lycopene is actually beneficial for our heart, oh, okay. right? Um, we have other colored fruits such as the orange and yellow color one. Mm -hmm. Those like your lemon, your orange, your yellow capsicum also. This fruit typically contains higher amount of 
of um, vitamin A and vitamin C, mm. which is um, beneficial for immunity and to maintain our eye vision as well. Okay. Um, purple, purple mm. fruits such as your blueberries, grapes. your grapes, mm. okay, they are typically high in anthocyanin. And this colored fruit, right, is very popular among students. Do you know oh, why? why? Okay, because um, studies have indicated it's actually mm. good for our brain in terms of memory. Okay. Okay, so uh, maybe I'll just want to share a little bit of stories, okay? Because mm. um, back then when I was doing my 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 um my degree okay. in nutrition, and mm. we found out this fact. Okay, so a lot of my classmates actually start to consume a day. lot of blueberries to eat a lot every day <laughs> because all of us want to have a better memory, right? Yeah. But eventually then everybody turned purple. No, no. Okay, eventually they have the assumption that think that they will do well in their exam, right? Because they have a lot of blueberries, right? Okay. But eventually guess who did better? I did better. <laughs> Because, I mean, although it helps, but you mm. still need to work hard, ma, still need to work hard to study hard, uh, work well as well also. And, and it's very essential to have this concept also, mm. because people often think that oh, consuming nutrients itself is beneficial for our health. Yeah. But we have to complement it with our daily activity, the exercising or even reading, doing as well mm. to keep ourselves mentally active. Okay. That is something that's very important in terms of brain health as well. Mm. Um, when it comes to green colour, fruits and vegetables that are typically high in mm. dietary fibre, those are good to um, promote bowel movement. Mm. And white colour would be like your garlic and, and, and your your garlic and your cabbage and mm. cauliflower. Okay. They are typically be- beneficial in terms of antibacterial uh, properties as mm. well. So King Ming, can you remember all the benefits? Mm, not really. Not really, right? I find quite hard to remember yeah. it as well. So usually I'll say rather than Got saying trick, uh. Got trick, okay, right? okay. rather than mm. saying an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Uh-huh. I always like to say a rainbow a day. The rainbow. The, the rainbow keep the doctor away. Mm. Okay. Can okay. so um okay, I think uh, earlier we also have this other mm. question. Oh wow. How many eggs per day? Century egg or salted egg? Which is healthier? I think this both question is also not healthy, right? I think the question is which is yummy. <laughs> <laughs> I think both of them, both of them are not really that healthy because mm. uh it's preserved food mm. so typically they are high in salt mm. so if you enjoy it consume it moderately because um consuming too much salt is actually bad for blood pressure uh-huh. mm. okay <laughs> do you recommend three proper heavy meals a day or light meals with healthy snacking in between meals oh oh okay, okay. um for me maybe for, for i'll just share share a little bit about myself okay. i think usually for me i I like to um, do it in this way. Mm. Three meals plus two snack. Well, oh, that's a lot, right? Yep. Okay, so usually for myself, like uh, in, the, in the day, I'll usually have enjoy my breakfast. Mm. My breakfast and during the midday, between your, your breakfast and lunch, I like to include a little snack in it. Mm. Okay, um, like your food, like a different food, like apple, okay. your orange itself. Mm. I think that really keeps me full and provides me energy la, to last mm. to a longer duration as well. And this is very important for weight management also because when we are hungry, mm-hmm. we tend to consume more. more and we tend to prefer food that are higher in fats and sugar also. Okay. So by having an apple in between to make yourself feel fuller, mm-hmm. you feel less hungry, right? Okay. So it is more likely that you'll make a healthier choice during your lunch, during your lunch or dinner also. Mm, mm. Okay. Mm, okay, what else? Let's see. Samantha asks, why I never eat still put on weight? Why you never eat? You don't eat at all? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Samantha, you mm-hmm. don't eat or you eat very little? <laughs> yeah. I, I think there's a difference, right? Is mm. there a difference? I think that really depends. I think when it comes to weight management, mm. okay, it's not just about food. Mm. It's about uh active lifestyle as mm. well. It comes, it complements together. Okay. Okay. So that is very important. Not mm. just diet itself, and it's not just exercise itself. It comes hand in hand together. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, I think you also prepared some things which you want to share on alkaline water. Oh. Okay. Right. Why? Oh. Why is that important? Why do you think that that's something that you want to share? I think because when it comes to alkaline water, I think mm. there are, there are, I, I came across a lot of information on the internet, I think social media, saying that alkaline water is good for us. Mm. Because by drinking alkaline water, it keeps your body in an alkaline state. Mm. Okay, and that will prevent you from getting all sorts of diseases. Okay. Um, which, for me, okay, before I share the answer, I would like to share with you a little bit in terms of how our body functions. Mm. Okay, so for example, if today, 
I'm eating something, let, let's say a sandwich. Mm. Okay, I'll chew, 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 chew. And when I swallow, you go right down to our stomach. And our stomach contains stomach acid. Mm. And stomach acid is acidic. They are really acidic. They have a very low pH around 2 to 3. Okay. Okay, so in, in that condition, anything that goes into your stomach will be acidic. Mm. Right? And after it's been digested in the stomach, you move on to your small intestine. Mm. But of course, before your, your small intestine accepts the content, okay, our body will actually release a buffer. Okay, that will actually help to um, bring up the pH slightly higher, mm -hmm. near to neutral, so that it doesn't burn your small intestine state. Mm. Okay, so essentially, whatever food that you consume, when it reaches your stomach, and when it passes through to your small intestine, okay, you will be neutralized, go more towards a neutral pH. Okay. Okay, so essentially, even if you are drinking alkaline water, okay, when it travel down to the stomach, you'll become acidic. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So better not, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, should I eat my fruit before or after meal? I would say in between your different meals, like let's say between breakfast mm. and lunch, mm. in the middle, if you're hungry, you can actually consume a fruit as oh, a snack. Okay. okay. And maybe in between also you can have a fruit or maybe a yogurt or anything Oh, else. why? I like to eat it after my dinner. I think that's fine, but I think it's more towards um, having, it helps in two ways. Mm. One, in this way, ensure you have at least two servings of fruits a day, oh, right? Okay. And the other way is because, uh, like what I've mentioned earlier, uh, it serves as a healthier snack uh, in between. Mm. So it helps to bring out your blood glucose slightly a little bit higher okay. during the midday la, so mm. that you won't be too hungry mm. when you are going to have your lunch or dinner, which makes you make um, less healthy choices itself. Mm. But of course, when it comes to snack, it's not just always fruit or mm. vegetables. You can also have some yogurt or even some unsalted baked nuts is good also. Okay. Mm. Okay, we have a question in Chinese. 鸡蛋和西兰花哪个比较好? Mm. So, 鸡蛋和西兰花哪个比较好? Broccoli. The nutrients for, for 西兰花跟鸡蛋 it's very different. Like si lan si ha, yeah. <laughs> so for Silan Hua Ti Ben Sang Su Man Su Chai Ma. So Su Chai Ti Ben Sang Su K Bong Man Chu Ti Woman the Changwe Lu Dong. Well Sha Ti Tan Ha Pu Su Gui Hua Ris uh Su Chai Ha Soman the Dam Bai Chi. So Ti Ben Sang Xiang Woman the Ti Tan Ha Kei Pu Chong Woman the Dam Bai Chi the Sachi Liang La Yi Ge Zong Pu Tong the Yang Fen Bu Woman the Hao Zi Fang Dun Dun. So Lang Go Sa Hao the Ji Zhang Su Chi Ge Zong Ge Yang the Su Wu La Ju So 一餐应该是营养均衡的，要有你的蛋白质，如你的鸡蛋，然后要你要需要有你的碳水化合物，像你的糙米啦，或者燕麦等等，然后最重要是要摄取足够的蔬菜水果。嗯，所以这就是营养
olive oil. Mm. Okay, those that contain smaller, uh, lower smoke point, mm. so they are not so suitable for high temperature cooking. Okay. Okay. Um, but of course, if you are using for those regular kind of um, cooking, okay, you can consider some other options like your rice bran oil, canola oil, and all sorts because they have a higher smoke point. Mm. So which means that uh, it can tolerate heat better. Okay. Okay, and smoke point is very important because when the oil reaches its smoke point, it actually starts to produce carcinogenic products, mm. okay, which are we are by products that actually cause cancer. So that is very very important to know. Okay, first thing is to consider what you are using it for. Mm. Okay, second one. Okay, of course, from our foundation, we also want to provide you some tips to choose heart healthier oil. Uh, one way I would say is to look up for monopoly uncle when you are purchasing your cooking oil. The the board game that we play. Nearer to that, okay, but I'll say more towards reading the label. Mm. Okay, look up for mono unsaturated fat and okay. poly unsaturated fat. Mm. These are what we call as good fat. Okay, so if the oil contains higher amount of mono poly uncle, or otherwise mono unsaturated mm. and poly unsaturated fat, it is more heart healthy for us. Mm. Mm. So these are my two tips to choose. Okay. Mm. Okay, another question is. If I eat fruits immediately after a heavy meal, will my body still absorb the nutrients? Oh, so it's somewhat similar to mm. what I said. I like to eat it after my yeah, It's okay. Food. I think it will still be digested and absorbed. Mm. And in fact, I think sometimes fruit can be mm. a good substitute to dessert as well. Because mm. some of us like to end off um, the meal with something sweet. Yeah. Right? So rather than going for your ice cream mm. or your sobe, go for a fruit. It's not only healthier, uh, it also helps in some weight management um, um, help as well. So mm, mm. okay, okay. Sorry, back to the cooking oil, right? Yeah, I cannot have so many cooking oil at home, right? Okay, I can only choose one. I only want to buy one bottle. Okay, which one should I choose? Okay, do you have a preferred type, or you or no. don't have? A? No. Okay, for me personally, if you want to have a more generic one, mm. uh, one of the option you can consider would be rice bran oil. Oh, rice okay. bran oil because mm. it got quite a high amount of, uh, quite a high smoke point mm. and the good fat content is high as well. So it's very suitable for general usage. Okay. Mm. So that's the, if I only want to buy one kind of oil. Yeah, that is one. probably one of it. Okay. But of course, if you have a preference to a certain type of oil, mm. let's say even for corn oil, peanut oil and all sorts, okay. I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. But choose the brand that contains a higher amount of monounsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat. Ah, okay. Mm. Okay. So uh, we have gone on for half an hour. Oh. Wow, time, <laughs> time flies. <laughs> okay, if there are no other questions, uh, maybe we'll end this session. Thank you mm. very much for watching us. This is our Thank first you. time doing this uh, Facebook Live. So um, if you guys like it, we can try to explore uh, doing some other topics in future. So yeah, thanks everybody for your active participation. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. -bye.